Hey everyone, this is Dr. Brian Scott with you, and this is Insights to the End Times. Uh, we would encourage you to go to our website, insightstotheendtimes.com. We have been recording these podcasts on a daily basis, six days a week, and we're coming up on our second year anniversary. So we've really shared a lot of material with you dealing with where we are in God's timetable as we approach the end times, the end of the age, as the scriptures refer to. We've also been looking at a lot of world events, and I can assure you that every morning as I pick up and open the newspaper and open my, uh, my cell phone, my smartphone, and open my laptop, uh, the news that jumps out at me is all indicative of these last days and the prophecies being fulfilled. So we're getting closer and closer all the time. Right now, our study is looking at the various wars that are going to happen leading up to the seven years of tribulation, as well as during the tribulation. So you'll get a handle on how intense things will be during that seven year period. And just as a matter of a real quick review, we looked the other day at a, a war defined in or described in Psalm 83. And the timing of this war, I am not really able to give you a black and white answer. But what I have found very interesting in those verses is that they want to annihilate or exterminate the nation of Israel so it, it exists no more. And that's what I'm reading in the newspapers every, every day, it seems, since October 7th, when Hamas invaded Israel and uh, literally destroyed, um, just uh, horribly destroyed uh, the 1,200 to 1,400 people, etc., uh, these verses in Psalm 83 are almost word for word what the newspaper has been reporting. The second war we looked at was the war that kicks off the seven years of tribulation. It's a war in Ezekiel 38. It's referred to as World War III. It's where Russia and its allies invade Israel, and they are defeated in one day. The third war we looked at was simply a, a conventional type of warfare described in Revelation 6. This is where God pours out his first set of judgments, the sealed judgments, and 25% of the world's population is destroyed because of those judgments, hence the reference to war. The fourth war we looked at is the nuclear war that we studied yesterday. This is where the effect of this war in Revelation 8 and 9, the trumpet judgments, seem to have the, the um, uh, overriding nature of a nuclear type attack or a nuclear type fallout. Today I want to look at Revelation chapter 12 with you. This is what we call war number five in our study. And in this war, uh, the Antichrist is so perturbed and so frustrated and so angry that he launches an all-out offensive against God's people. As a, as a further attack against them. Let me read you some verses here in Revelation chapter 12, verses 12 through 17. I hope uh, you have a chance to open your Bibles and follow along with me. Uh, in verse 12, it says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Then the subheading in my Bible says, The woman is persecuted. The woman is a reference to the nation of Israel. Verse 13, now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, that's a reference to Satan, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. He persecuted Israel who gave birth to Jesus Christ. 14, the woman was given two, given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So here we have a reference to Israel is going to be hidden away during the last half of the tribulation. That's the reference to time and times and time and a half. That's a reference to that last three and a half year period, second half of the tribulation. She's going to fly into the wilderness, which I'll try and get to and describe to you before we close today. Verse 15, the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Verse 17, 
And the dragon was en enraged with the woman, and he went to war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. This last verse 17 indicates that the dragon, the devil, or the Antichrist in this situation is so absolutely infuriated with what's going on that he launches war against not only the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, but also against the born-again believers who are referred to in the last half of that verse. They keep the commandments of God, and they have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which refers to the fact they are Christians. So we have got ourselves a massive battle going on against the remaining Jewish people on the earth and the, the believers who are here on the earth. Praise the Lord. Verse 17, heavy-duty verse. Hallelujah. Now, he has failed to succeed in taking over the world as he had planned. So we see uh, part of what's going to happen during the seven years of tribulation is no matter what the devil through the Antichrist is trying to do, he's not going to be overly successful. He therefore attempts this all-out war against the nation of Israel, the woman, and um, against all the believers, those who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Um, what does God do? Well, God has a plan, hallelujah, and God's plan is he hides the woman, the nation of Israel, in the wilderness, and it says she is nourished for a time and a times and a time and a half. So this is the three and a half, the latter three and a half years of the tribulation period. The nation of Israel, the Jewish people, are spread out and they are sent into the wilderness. That reference to wilderness um, is likened unto the interspersing of the Jewish people among the Gentile peoples of the world as presently exists in our world. We have Jewish people living all over uh, our nation, uh, and our nation primarily a Gentile nation. That means not Jewish. And uh, we live together side by side, and uh, uh, many times you don't know they're a Jewish person until they identify themselves. But the point is this. God provides for them, and he provides well for them. They're well-nourished, so there's no lack whatsoever. He protects them. Isn't that powerful? And <clears throat> They're going to be in populated areas, and they're going to have a, a, a access to abundant food. They're going to be well-nourished. So God always has a plan. He always defeats the enemy, no matter what the enemy tries to do. And uh, this continuing battle by the Antichrist and all of his followers against God's people and the born-again people who are living on this earth in the tribulation period will be unsuccessful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you probably never even thought of that set of verses as an uh, instance of war, but um, it is, and it won't work, and God will come through with the victory once again. Tomorrow we're going to head into one, the, the war that I want to share with you. Uh, it's the Battle of Armageddon, and I'm sure you've heard that term before, and I'm sure you, um, everybody around you has heard that term before, but we're going to spend two or three sessions looking at that because it's such a powerful, powerful uh, end to the seven years of tribulation. I will see you tomorrow. Look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for joining us today. Amen.